team went to Ibrox today desperately wanting to prolong that 37-match unbeaten Premier run. For a good number of these players in the Ibrox tunnel, it was their first experience of what the old firm fixture is all about. Taking it all in was a crowd of 50,210. Billy McNeil was there alongside Jock Brown. Rangers have lost a Scottish international strike force through injury. Ali McCoy, and Gordon Jury join long-term casualties. Alan McLaren, David Robertson, Trevor Stephen and Stephen Wright on the sidelines. But Stuart McCall returns after missing the European match in midweek, and that could be vital. Dutchman Peter van Bossen will have his first experience of old firm football. After a very slow start to his Rangers career last season, he's enjoyed a remarkable renaissance, contributing nine goals in five starts and eight substitute appearances this season. And there's confirmation that Celtic 2 have lost their first choice strike force, Pierre van Hoydonk and George Cadet. Quite apart from long term injury absentees, Paul McStay and Phil O'Donnell from midfield. But Tosh McKinley returns at left wing back, and Simon Donnelly has a key role up front. Alan Stubbs cost £3.5 million pounds when he joined Celtic from Bolton Wanderers in the close season. But injury and suspension have curtailed them to four starts and one appearance as substitute. Like Van Bossen, this is his first experience of old firm football. And there's an old firm refereeing debut too for Glasgow solicitor Willie Young from Clarkston, although he has run the line on two Rangers Celtic matches in the past. The anticipation is over. The reality of the match is here at last. And the opportunity for both sides to cast aside the nightmare of the European problems in midweek. Richard Goff having to move quickly there to turn that back to Andy Gorham. So the settling in process, very important indeed as usual, but a match of even more importance than normal, I would suggest. Just two points separating the sides at the top of the Premier Division. Six wins out of six for Rangers, five wins in a draw for Celtic. And a very important psychological blow to be struck by one of these sides. Tommy Burns there on the left with Billy Stark is number two. Looking on anxiously, and alterations required immediately by Tommy Bonds. That's good play by Gascoigne. Here's McCall. Stubbs holding off Alberts confidently. That's good early play from Stubbs for Celtic. Timing the pass brilliantly there for McKinley. This is promising for Celtic. Finally waits in the middle. McKinley couldn't find him. Free kick being given for the challenge there on Petrich by McKinley, but some impressive play there, Billy, by Alan Stubbs. It was indeed. He started the game very confidently. Nice pass out to Justin. He held the ball too long before delivering it into the middle. This is Petrich for Rangers. Loud up on the run. Cut up brilliantly there by Stubbs. Now Tom has space to advance into here. That's for Di Canio. Back to Tom. And he's closed down well in the end by Petrich, but had Tom been able to take that pass? First time from Di Canio. Gorham could have been tested. That's Tom again. Headed away by Gorham. Good attacking play this from Celtic. Goff concedes the corner, which is taken very quickly. Here's Di Canio. There's a second chance here for the cross. That's for Hughes. Oh, they appear to be caught off balance when the ball arrived. Didn't appear to be really too high for him. The ball is just overplayed a little bit, but a good attacking spell by Celtic there. And Andreas Thomas causing Rangers problems simply playing in behind those front two. And as yet, no one is prepared to pick him up. Donnelly helps it on. Di Canio moves quickly to the wall. He's away from Petrich. A chance for Celtic. Brilliant play by Di Canio. And it's turned away off the line by Petrich. And I really wonder if the referee gave advantage there. He could have given a penalty, I think, for a foul on Di Canio. But he gave the advantage with the player stayed on his feet. 
when Paolo Di Canio went into the box there, you can see him sidestep his man, clearly foul, I thought, but stayed up, and the referee allowed him the shot at goal. Archie Knox there, with David Odds, the coaching staff for Rangers on the bench, Walter Smith in the director's box as usual early in the match. Di Canio rolling into McCall there, expertly to win possession. Plenty of players forward here for Celtic, Andreas Tom wants the pass, once again. But half a yard ahead of him, the second time in the match. Goff forced to dive to head clear. That's twice to Canio, was trying to pick out Tom with a pass inside the box and just missed. I think he was a bit late in delivering the pass, he had the opportunity earlier, Andreas Tom had got to support him, but he delayed it too long and I think it made it more difficult for him. That's given away by Di Canio to Lodra. He sent crushing there by Grant. The referee may take action here against Grant, I suspect. Well, he's given the free kick all right. It's a typical Lodra ploy, he runs straight at the heart of the defence. I th really think it's a missed time challenge by Peter Grant more than anything else. Alberts is onside. The referee's halted play. The free kick's been given to Rangers. The goal is chopped off because the whistle had gone before it found the net. It's a free kick to Rangers. It's a strange decision because really Rangers obviously would have wanted that to run and they had they had the ball exactly where they wanted it it's an unusual decision but you've got to take the referees at time for a foul on Van Vossen as he delivered the pass a let off for Celtic now they have problems set piece specialist Gascoigne and Alberts Alberts already has scored one terrific free kick by Brooks in recent weeks the wall stood up well to that. Corner kick. And relief for Celtic. Well, Bert's having scored the goal, which was chopped off, trying to do that again from the free kick. So 20 minutes of the match gone. No goals counting as yet. One for Rangers chopped off. A couple of good chances also for Celtic. Mellon picking out Alberts for trying to, but John Hughes read that well for Celtic. Well, that's good play by Mike Namara. Andreas Tom is lying on the ground in the middle of the field now for Celtic. He won't take much more part in this game, I'm sure. Alberts trying to release Van Bossen. Supporting player is Moore. Get the break off Boyd. Back with Van Bossen. Range of retained possession. Tom is still out of the play, getting back to his feet unsteadily. Gascoigne against Grant. And Marshall at full stretch. Marshall complaining and the referee should have stopped the play for Andreas Tom's injury. Tremendous play by Gascoigne here. Takes it, shows it to defender, goes, goes again, makes possession. What a magnificent save by Gordon Marshall. Just got his fingertips there, but that was enough. And that was enough to save the Celtic goal. Towering header there by Petric. Alberts looking for Lowe's, but the covering player was Tom Boyd. And Lowe's up making sure the pass couldn't be played short to Boyd on the left-hand side. Good pressing play by Rangers. Here's Gascoigne. He's been fouled. Free kick to Rangers. Well, conceding free kicks just outside the penalty area against Rangers, a very dangerous ploy. You know, Gascoigne is good at this, but, you know, I'm not convinced there was a foul there in the first place, and I think the referee might just have made a lot of mistake. Low drop, looking for McCall. Good save by Marshall. And an excellent recovery there by Vicost on Cleland. Terrific inventive play from the set piece from Rangers. It was, wasn't it? Real inventive. And look at McCall peeling off there. And once again, Marshall, the save Celtic. Tremendous save. Donnelly, Grant, good play from Celtic. That's not accurate enough for Donnelly, but back to Mara has it for Celtic. 
Donnelly has support from O'Neill inside. That's for Di Canio, he's onside. That's good running by Di Canio. And a superb tackle there by McCall. He's injured himself in the process. But it really was crucial that for Rangers. The challenge there. Here's McCall. He made a quick recovery from that injury. Gascoigne under pressure from Grant. Here's Goff. Gascoigne hustled out of that by Di Canio. Last fine play by Di Canio, but there's no one in the far post. It was a great ball in. Moore did well. And Di Canio has every right to complain over the lack of support coming in the far post. But a bit of trouble off the ball here. The referee Young is going across to take action there against McKinley, I think. Yeah, it's a magnificent play by Di Canio. He's been so good at taking the ball to the defender. Delightful cross into the back post, but no one there. But it's here the trouble comes up. Tosh McKinley goes in and is booked for being a bit petrous and challenging Andy Gorman. Well, both sides have had spells on the ascendancy in the match so far. Celtic get a start, then Rangers took over. Now it seems to be evening out a little again. That's going hustled out of that again. Here's Grant. Donnelly. Good effort by Donnelly. Andy Gorham had to be very careful there going across the check. That was going wide. Well, it's a good effort by Simon Donnelly. He knows exactly what he's trying to do. He's trying to cover it in the back post and not all that far away, but I think Andy Gorham had it well covered, to be honest. Alberts again getting the better of O'Neill in the air. That's Stubbs. Yorkland finds Vidi Canio with a clearing header. Strong defending by Petrich on Donnelly, and this is McCall breaking. Handball by McKinley. Oh, McKinley is going to go off. He's going off. The yellow card for McKinley, followed by the red. Celtic players look on, but it was a handball by McKinley, having been booked already. McKinley is still arguing the point. He'll have to leave the field, though. Well, the seventh Celtic player of the season to be over the north. And how this may change the complexion of what has been a very even match so far. Tommy Barnes and Billy Stark consider the options tactically. It's a break from, from Celtic. You know, Tosh McKinley puts his hand out and the referee's getting no option but to give him a yellow card and add it to the other one, he must go off. Grant's tackle on Albert brings the first half to an end and Paulo Di Cario had the best chance for Celtic, he might have had a penalty but stayed on his feet and brought it a great save from Andy Gorham. Jorg Albert scored and the goal was chopped off for a foul to Rangers the whistle had gone just before that but the real point of the second half will be how rates Celtic cope with just 10 men Tommy Bond's getting his players away from the referee to his credit and the whistling around the stadium beat the departure of referee Willie Young who's got it off Tosh McKinley with just a minute of the first half left at half time it's Rangers nil Celtic nil So the big issue to resolve in the second half will be how Celtic go about the task. Now they're reduced to ten men. They have a tactical decision which has had been taken obviously at half time to leave Paolo Di Canio up front all on his own. Here's Craig Moore advancing for Rangers. Running straight into John Hughes. So there's a collision off the ball there. An accidental one. O'Neill and Gascoigne and they both have taken a knock. Well, Neil, I don't think appreciates Gascoigne, but the referee's satisfied, I'm sure, that it was accidental. So there are the two players at the top of the picture there, and Gascoigne and Neil running across each other. I do believe that was accidental, nothing in that at all. And Rangers surely with a major advantage for the second half. A wet surface, the ball skidding rapidly. Stamina will be tested before the end, that's for sure. Asking a lot there of Mike Namara, but Cleland is very quick indeed. That's good play by Mike Namara, taking something out, out of very little. Here's Vikhorst. That's a good save by Gorham. 
But he course from that left wing back position vacated by McKinley advancing to good effect. It was good pressing playing because he's in the right position to get in a shot off the off the greasy surface, but well taken by Andy Gorham. Well the problem lay for Celtic but to get the ball out of the area for long enough to get some respite and put some pressure on Rangers. Here's Alberts. Van Bossen coming into the left, which he does so well. Alberts. Splendid save by Marshall. It's good play just on the edge of the box by Rangers. Bit of interplay there. A little break there, but Alberts doesn't half hit this. again it's a tremendous left footed cross at the box by Albert it, the astonishing thing for me is we all know Go Richard Goff's ability in there meets this one perfectly the surprising thing is he's given so much room with the Celtic defence well Richard Goff's second goal of the season which Rangers ahead here's Laudrup on the far side is Gasco and he can now do some roaming up front because he shouldn't need to worry about too many defensive chores in behind Hughes. Oh, that's great play by Lodrop and a block played by Marshall. Great goalkeeping again by God Marshall. It's a brilliant run by, by Lodrop. Look at John Hughes, how he stripped him. Knows exactly what he's want to do, but once again, God Marshall comes out and saves the day for Celtic. Gasco in reacts to McCall's. Demand for the ball in midfield. Here's Moore. He course have been pulled out of position. Well enough struck, but straight down Marshall's throat, and he's in good form now. Bad throw out though. Marshall apologizes to his defense as Lodrop sets up the cross. McCall. Blocked by Grant. Appeals for handball. Wave the side by the referee. Bad tackle there by Boyd on Moore. And there'll be a free kick. Richard Goff asking the referee for a penalty kick for the block by Grant in the six-yard box. Well, it's a real lunge by Tom Boyd, and really it's a bit careless at that stage, and on the edge of the box is always dangerous to give those type of fouls away. Another chance for Rangers when the dust settles here from the set piece. The angle is ideal for Alberts. Gascoigne may play it short and beyond the wall. There it goes. Here's Alberts. Well, the advertising holding feeling a full sting of that shot from Alberts. He strikes the ball so well, but I think Gascoigne just plays it a little bit further than Alberts wanted and he snatches it just that little bit past. Well, now the V course. That was intended for the Canio. Bjork will clear us. You know, you wouldn't believe that, Decanio, whether or not he attended it, but he slipped it to Peter Grant, great strike and very cruel for Celtic. Well, interesting delay, the change tactically made by Celtic to go to flat four. I think they had to do that, they'd settled down quite nicely, they started to make one or two inroads in at Rangers goals, they've seen Peter Grant unlucky not to, to get it back to level terms and really they need some power and some running down this left-hand side and Tom Boyle will surely supply that. As is Gascoigne, skipping away from Hughes, driving at the Celtic defence. Very good goalkeeping once again by Marshall, his positioning was quite superb there. But Gascoigne at his best. It's typical Gascoigne, isn't it? He runs straight to the front of the uh, of players, he runs straight to the heart of the defence. He really should have released a pass here to either side, but 
that's not Gascoigne's way of doing it all credit once again to Gordon Marshall oh I'm sure Solid would rather have Decanio receiving a throw than delivering it O'Neill sending a great pass to Decanio he needs help in the middle retaining possession brilliantly for Grant Peter Grant applauding the efforts of Paulo Di Canio, but I don't think it'll be reciprocated by the Italian. It's absolutely brilliant the way he can turn and he changes his direction, he moves so quickly, always in control of the ball, and really Peter Grant should be doing more than that final effort. Kenny Dalglish in the director's box, looks like Dalglish Jr. beside him. Perhaps Gascoigne wants to play early in the box. Yes, Gascoigne. Well, he can't resist the little showmanship. Mind you, it was within his feet, he had to improvise. Here's McLaughlin breaking for Celtic. Well, amazing little attempt there by Gascoigne. The cross coming in from the left, he tried to showboat that into the net. Here's McLaughlin. Forced to go wide. They use McNamara. Alberts oh, makes the tackle and Grant is out of position. He made a run on the outside. Low drop with Alberts and Van Bossen. Here's Alberts. And that's a terrific tackle by McNamara. Very quick indeed getting across there. Tremendous challenge with McNamara because just as Alberts is lining up the shot and it comes and saves any danger for the goalkeeper Patrick with the header here's Ferguson that's for Van Boston who's offside hasn't had the whistle I think or has he I think he has the referee certainly thinks so he's going to be yellow carded for that Yellow card for Van Bossen. Eight bookings in the match so far. Two of them for Tosh McKinley. That's why Celtic are reduced to ten men. Scotland manager Craig Brown also in the director's box. Concerned obviously about any damage to players who may be involved next week in the trip to Latvia and Estonia. Here's De Canio. Now Mike Namara, chance here for Celtic. John Hughes is there, it's off the crossbar! The Celtic players can't believe it, Gascoigne might punish them now on the counter-attack. Celtic are fit in the back. Low drop, wide for Alberts. There's Gascoigne! Tremendous ball in from the left hand side by Alberson. Gascoigne has run from his own penalty almost. Bullets at internet, but it was a real sucker punch. And there, the quality of the cross is there to be seen. And you don't see Gascoigne miss those too often. Well, that's a brilliant ball by Alberts. And Gascoigne positioned himself brilliantly. He knew he was going to score here. He dived in with a head up. Marshall was helpless. And Gascoigne collects his seventh goal of the season. Great return from Gascoigne in midfield. The foul by Ferguson on McLaughlin. Ah, oh, Paul Gascoigne winking to the dugout there. But it might have been so different had that goal gone at the other end. Great play by Paulo Di Canio, setting up Jackie McNamara for the cross. The header from John Hughes comes back off the bar. Another down by McLaughlin. Here's McNamara and Grant. Horst to Mike Namara.
Bjorklund keeps the ball in play to avoid a corner kick. Alberts forward, there's Boyd now for Celtic. A bit of consolation goal now, that's a bad tackle. On B course, the free kick's taken quickly. Here's McNamara, and now Hughes. Corner kick it is. A deflection. Two minutes of stoppage time played. Celtic still looking for a consolation here. Being retrieved by Simon Donnelly. It reaches De Canio. Chance on here. Still De Canio. And Gorham makes the save. Oh, it's brilliant play by Gorham and by Paolo Di Canio, who certainly doesn't deserve to be in the losing side this afternoon. Donnelly's corner. McLaughlin across to Mike Namara. No test for Gorham. Well, credit due to Celtic for the way in which they fought to the end, but it is the end now. Rangers have won the first Old Firm match of the season and the gap at the top of the table goes to five points. Richard Goff to the vital opener on the corner kick from Jorg Alberts in 51 minutes. Celtic run out of luck, Peter Grant hit the post. Then John Hughes hit the bar before Paul Gascoigne headed the clincher just before the end. It was rough luck and a battling Celtic side in which Paolo Di Canio was outstanding up front. But the first blood of the Old Firm season goes to Rangers. It's Rangers 2, Celtic nil. Walter, relieved, I'm not to see the back of that game. How did you view it? Well, we were relieved and very pleased to, to get the win. I think there was a lot of tension involved. I think there was a lot of hype in terms of uh, Rangers going for nine in a row, Celtic preventing them. I think um, that was shown in the play. Um, people looked very tense in, in the game. I think that was uh, the way it was all the way through the match. Um, obviously, from our own point of view, I was happy the way we played in the first half. I felt Celtic had quite a bright start. Had, a couple of little opportunities through us, but then we had control of most of the first half of the game. Um, you know, once um, Tosh McKinley gets sent off, that sometimes changes the game and it upset the pattern of the match. And uh, we never really capitalised on that in the manner in which maybe we should have done. Um, and it was later in the, half, in the second half before we managed to get a goal through Richard Goff from a corner kick, and then very late in the game for Paul Gascoigne to score. So I felt there were times when we should have done better with uh, the one-man advantage, and we did do. You certainly seemed to struggle even after going in front, you know, you had a lot of the ball without breaking down the Celtic defence. Was that a concern to you at that time? Well, we've, we had a lot of opportunities and then we got to the stage of the game where Celtic were taking a chance, pushing people forward, more people than they had done any other time in the game. They had a couple of opportunities near the end before Paul Gascoigne scored, so um, it, was, it was an awkward match. It was always going to be an awkward match and I feel that both sides, you know, show that we had a very tough month in September. Uh, we had a lot of games and I think a lot of people out there are showing it, especially towards the end of the game. Uh, the game started uh, exactly the way we wanted it to start. I think you know we, we decided to sit in and see what we could get out of the game, bring the monitors a wee bit and try, and try and get in behind them. And I don't think they were causing us any problems. Uh, we've had an opportunity where we certainly feel we should have had something. And I think at that time, had it been given, then we had an opportunity maybe to go a goal ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, the sending off, we're very, very disappointed in that because I feel that's five or six players we've had sent off now uh, and it's really becoming cartoon, cartoon stuff because there, there's no way in God's earth that, that McKinley deserved to be sent off the day for that. I think that was a, a travesty. It certainly affected their shape. But to be fair to the players, it never, it never affected their spirit or their desire and they kept going and forcing the game. And I think the whole thing summed up in the last minute where we are still driving forward with an opportunity coming back off the bar and Rangers break away and, and get the second goal. Overall, Disappointed because it's an old firm game and it's the first game and we wanted to come and win it. Uh, I think you were certainly severely handicapped today for, for a variety of reasons. But we're not looking for that as an excuse because I feel that the players that were there are very passionate about the club. Feel a great deal for the club uh, and I think that was shown today. There appeared to be really two key moments. The one thing you referred to there was the Paul De Cani incident when he might have had a penalty kick. Yeah. An advantage seemed to be applied. Is that how you saw it? No, I feel you know you, you play the advantage and uh, if you get an advantage from it, then so be it. But at this moment, or at the moment, we looked at it, 
uh, there was no advantage, so we feel that the decision should have been given. You made reference to the fact that you had one or two players out for a variety of reasons. Pierre Van Hoyden obviously has been saying to the apartment that he wants to stay at Celtic. What is your position on that? Yeah, well, I'm delighted to hear that. I'm delighted to hear that, but uh, he's a player like every other player here. Uh, and he'll be allowed to stay if he goes along with the rules that the other players go along with. Does that suggest he's been breaking some? Uh, maybe take advantage of people at times. So Rangers now with seven wins out of seven and their victory today at Ibrox opens up a five-point lead over Celtic at the top of the Premier table. Billy, 29 games still to go, but mm -hmm. obviously a big psychological boost.